Hi guys, this is Vaish from Vaish IAS and we are going to continue the Geography and CRT series for class 7th, chapter 6 and 7. Chapter 4 and 5 was already uploaded, that is about water, air, we have seen the water cycle, the air layers, uh, different layers of atmosphere, then ozone layer, then uh, the ocean currents, I showed you a diagram. So NCRTs have a lot of pictures, so it's like a familiarization with the topics which we have to go in detail when we go to higher classes, okay, which will be all beneficial for you for your UPSC preparation if you go in order okay so chapter 6 and 7 it's basically about 6 is dealing with the natural vegetation the different types of uh, forest you can tell the climate and vegetation link the tropical rainforest evergreen forest deciduous forest dry deserts and all those things chapter 7 is just about the evolution of uh, transport communication human settlement like how the, they had uh, Indus Valley civilization then they came to the uh, settled uh, life and then the modern world so uh, that just uh, evaluation uh, through pictures we'll see it, see it okay it's very simple chapter so chapter 6 and 7 we'll finish it quickly today okay class 7 so chapter 6 natural vegetation and wildlife okay so first they are telling a story and all it's not required for us uh, a plant is give, shown a rotted and drawn it's shown in ice age movie if you have seen a uh, leaf of this is shown rotted and drawn so uh, uh, from uh, Salima's or oh, second split that story not required what conceptually we have to understand is a relationship between the height of the land and the character of vegetation okay when with the change in height the climate changes and the uh, vegetation also changes okay so that is the concept you have to understand here the growth of vegetation depends on temperature and moisture so height temperature moisture okay these are all deciding factors and again slope thickness of soil so these are the factors you should know which will decide the vegetation of a particular location okay height temperature moisture slope of slope and thickness of soil now uh, again varies from place to place factors different things are given forest shrubs and all will be given i think later yeah For, uh, forest grassland and shrubs okay forest grassland shrubs so the name is you know this difference like uh, temperature and rainfall plentiful so support a tree cover uh, depending upon uh, these factors dense and open forest are grown here are some boxes given okay not required it's again story kind of thing uh, which grows in okay moderate rainfall grasslands thorny scrubs and uh, uh, dry region okay shrubs this picture okay so three terms factors next important thing in this chapter would be again wildlife also will be dependent on the characteristic features okay of how the vegetation is depending on that only obviously the fauna will be there here the lungs of the earth the brazil you can tell the amazon rainforest it's called the lungs of the earth because of that much tree cover and canopy canopy is actually this picture when tree cover is too much that the sunlight can't even enter and reach the earth that is what is called tree canopy okay in tropical evergreen forest and all it will be very much huge so that is what is our first topic also under forest tropical evergreen forest these forests are also called tropical rainforest the thick forest called uh, region near the equator okay it's region location is near the equator and close to the tropics these regions are hot and receive heavy rainfall throughout the year the equatorial climate uh, this is the most uh, what is a distinct feature feature okay throughout the year rainfall is there and it is hot also like uh, the equate African central countries you can tell or uh, Indonesia you can tell there and all it's like this tropical evergreen forest these trees do not shed their leaves altogether okay that is why it is evergreen meaning some trees will be shedding their leaves in one part of the year other will be in different part of the year but altogether if you see so there will be greenery throughout the year okay okay again canopy is what it is does not allow the sunlight to enter and these are the tree names again class 6 we have seen already rosewood ebony mahogany okay in case initially massive following question comes do not confuse what is evergreen what is deciduous and all next is deciduous here again one box anaconda and crocodile all these things not much required uh, tropical deciduous forest are the monsoon forest all you can tell the indian type okay because india majority is this type of forest okay tropical deciduous forest uh, India, Northern Australia, Central America. Okay, regions experience seasonal changes. Trees shed their leaves in the dry season to conserve water. So there is a definite dry season and there is a wet season. Okay, not like equatorial equatorial region where we have a continuous rainfall. Uh, these are the examples: sal, teak, neem, shisham. Okay, you should know these names. Hardwood trees are extremely useful for making furniture. Okay, teak cannot you know furniture? Burma teak especially is very famous. 
so making furniture, transport and construction materials, tiger, lions, elephants, langurs, monkeys, are common animals. So again, pictures will tell the entire thing what we saw in text. Temperate evergreen forest. Okay. So the name is changing. Temperate is not referring to the uh, tropics or something. It is the uh, mid mid latitudinal coastal region. Okay. Mid latitudinal coastal regions. They are commonly found along the eastern margins of the continents. Example, Southeast USA, South China, Southeast Brazil, okay, all the eastern coastal sites, that is where temperate evergreen forest you can find. They comprise both hard and softwood trees. So, if you basically put the absolute statements like it has only hardwood trees, it has only softwood trees, you should be aware of this fact. Oak, pine, eucalyptus, okay. The other thing we saw like teak, uh, shisham and uh, uh, I think deodorant, those kind of trees are there. But here it is oak, pine and eucalyptus temperate evergreen pictures again you can see temperate deciduous okay so like we had the tropical evergreen and deciduous we have the temperate evergreen and deciduous so here as we go towards higher latitudes we are going little more away from equator there are more of temperate deciduous forest and they are found in usa china new zealand chile <coughs> okay also found in the coastal regions of western europe so that one green uh, evergreen one we saw it in the eastern coast here it is telling about the western coast okay said their leaves in the dry season again there is a dry season definite dry season and these are the trees oak ash beech and uh, deer who foxes wolves are the animals birds like pheasants you can see the picture here pheasants and monal are the birds found in temperate deciduous forest then mediterranean vegetation mediterranean obviously you know where is the mediterranean sea so it will be much more easier to understand uh, covered by temperate evergreen and deciduous forest okay east and northeast margins of the continents the west and the are different they have different western vegetation okay so east and west it has distinction that is what they are telling it's not like uniformly same thing east has a different one west has a different one it is mostly found in the areas around the mediterranean sea in europe africa and asia hence the name okay this kind of vegetation is also found outside the actual Mediterranean region in California, in the USA, Southwest Africa, South again just, just listing down the names. Okay. Here are some facts. Mediterranean trees adapt themselves to dry summers with the help of their thick barks and wax coated leaves, which helps them reduce transpiration. One thing about the Mediterranean climate you should know, which is a very distinctive thing also, rainfall occurs here only in the winter. Okay. Rainfall occurs in the winter season. The actual the western disturbance concept is also related to here. From the here only the western disturbance are traveling towards the eastern side and reaching India and in North India, Delhi and all you get rainfall in winter. Okay. So that is the uh, concept of western disturbances and relation with Mediterranean climate. And it's also called orchards of the world because of their food cultivation. You know, like oranges or tomatoes or fruits, vegetables, everything are all grown in plenty in the Mediterranean climate. The wines, okay, port wine you call it, Portugal wine, the Spanish wine, everywhere it is too popular. So that is all coming from the Mediterranean region. Okay, again regions are there. Hot, dry summer and mild, rainy winters. Exactly what I explained to you. Okay, citrus fruits like oranges, figs, olives, grapes are commonly cultivated. Okay, coniferous forest, next one. So we are just going away from the equator, again more away, okay, higher lati latitude of 50 to 70, okay, that is near the Arctic Circle, you can tell. So here it is in the northern hemisphere, spectacular coniferous trees, it's also called taiga, okay, taiga is one thing, next level, even if you go near to the 80, 90 degree and all, it will be tundra, okay, taiga is one thing and tundra is above that, so try to remember that naming in order. Taiga means pure or untouched in Russian language, that is the name, naming convention higher altitude uh, then they have tall softwood evergreen trees okay tall softwood and evergreen you should know this used for pulp making matchbox packing box paper newsprint because all are softwood okay so that is why these kind of purposes chair pine cedar are the important variety of uh, trees in the forest silver fox mink polar bear are the common animals okay Try to make a table. We have already made it. I have posted in our Facebook page. Again, if you want, I can uh, show you or I'll upload it again later someday. There is a very simple table where I have listed all the forest, all the vegetation, animals, plants, the temperature, latitude, comparative study you can do. So it will be done in one shot. But this is just because you want to understand through pictures, we are doing the NCRT. Okay. 
grasslands tropical grasslands these occur on the either side of the equator and extend till the tropics okay grasslands it's from equator towards the tropics this vegetation grows in the areas of moderate to low amount of rainfall the grass can grow very tall about 3 to 4 meters in height you can you would have seen in the jungle book movie and all these kind of uh, tall grasses okay savanna grasslands is the name of the grassland in africa elephant zebras they are exactly what we saw in the jungle book movie okay that is the tropical grasslands <coughs> savanna is a good example savanna remember the name in africa because most of the following questions have been asked in the past temperate grasslands are is a different thing because the uh, location differs it is latitudinal uh, mid latitude you can tell okay not near the equator so it is like interior part of the continent usually grass here is short okay short and nutritious wild buffaloes bisons antelopes are common in the temperate region there are actually lot of naming convention for different tropical grasslands sorry tropical and temperate grasslands so here they have given it in table very famous ones only so uh, temperate ones i think you will be more familiar with the one which is given here argentina pampas that is south america you can tell south america pampas north america prairie south america sorry south africa veld central asia steppes australia down these are more common and we learn it but here you should know these names also tropical grasslands where we have the tall grasses east africa savanna we saw brazil campos venezuela llanos so if you see these both are in south america only but this is tropical campos and llanos and here in argentina it is pampas okay so you should know the difference like what is tropical what is temperate what are the location differences also okay maths the following is definitely possible from these three locations brazil venezuela and argentina okay so thorny bushes dry areas obviously deserts tropical deserts on the western margins of the continent that is the upsc mains question why are most of the deserts located on the western side of western margin of the continent okay multiple reasons are there the wind is one reason trade winds are one reason then cold currents passing through that region western side we saw in the last chapter that will create a uh, effect of what to say uh, <coughs> heat waves and that and all will create the Uh, desert region that's the detailed thing we'll do upsc question later but uh, you should know western margin continents uh, deserts are present okay scanty rain scorching heat then here okay that is all they have given polar region as i told tundra region which is the ultimate region you can call near the poles mosses and lichens are the uh, plants there vegetation okay europe asia north america all the northern most areas thick fur and thick skin obviously to protect from cold climate these are the animals seal walrus musk oxen arctic owl polar bear snow foxes okay so that is all about different climatic regions and that is all about this chapter also so we will see basic questions just for a satisfaction of completing ncert moss and lichens are found in tundra thorny bushes are found in hot and dry desertic climate tropical evergreen forest one of the common animals is tropical evergreen what it will be found monkeys will be found okay one important variety of uh, coniferous forest is rosewood is an evergreen teak is a deciduous pine is coniferous steppe grassland is found in central asia what were the other names australia we had down and uh, south africa we had veld okay and tropical grassland will be step uh, savannas okay so this is how you complete your ncert we will do the other chapter which is again a very silly chapter you can call because there is nothing which we need uh, for prelims or maybe mains also uh, it's very basic things settlement transport communication of humans okay so settlements places where people build their home these kind of things we rather should not read being upsc aspirants uh, okay so factors of people settling favorable climate availability of water suitable land fertile soil right from the indus valley civilization we know river or fertile land is the place where most of the uh, settlements happen okay uh, that is in this valley then after that if you see the mauryan the guptas everything is like in and around river basins only maximum population survival is on in and around the fertile areas so that is factors so again they are trailing same thing permanent settle uh, settlement and then growing crops the later trade commerce and all rise so famous rivers indus tigris nile huang he okay basic things which you know permanent temporary i'm just calling down because we don't have any thing to take from here okay this kind of terms you can know the pra they practice hunting gathering and shifting cultivation and transhumans transhumans is what transhumans is seasonal movement of people people who rear animals move in search of new pastures 
according to changes in season you know like they will be sometimes going up the hill for green grasses or when it's too cold they'll again come down to the base and settle so that movement for search of pastures and settlement is called transhumance okay movement of humans rest here nothing important is there you you can see pictures so that you will see compact settlements scattered settlements like in jammu and kashmir kashmir valley it will be like this but in european countries and all it will be like this or in india itself in chandigarh city and all it will be like this so difference in settlements mm. villages rural settlement agriculture fishing forestry craft work tradition you know now the government is also launching multiple schemes the ustad scheme and all for uh, traditional arts um compact settlement closely built dwellings mostly found in okay they just differentiating what we saw in picture that's all compact settlement and scattered settlement okay rural areas people build houses to suit their environment in regions of heavy rainfall they are so heavy rainfall see they, because flooding and all will happen above a platform or above this like raised level they will be building the houses okay that is one form of settlement thick mud wall houses with thatched roofs are very common in areas of hot climate so hot climate they'll have mud houses also local materials are used stones mud clay straw not required not very really important igloos you know this kind of thing igloo in the colder regions will be there so that's about settlement transport again it has been evolution the invention of wheel actually in upsc interview once the question was asked to an aspirant like uh, uh, tell 10 landmark discoveries 10 landmark inventions okay so wheel is one of the most important one and that aspirant has actually answered it also wheel uh, pottery steam engine like this you have to tell 10 different landmark discoveries internet will be there towards the recent ones so like that you prepare be prepared for such questions okay you basically can ask anything which is you, you may sound silly but it is they are just asking you a holistic thing 10 landmark inventions okay you cannot find it in any book or something it's just asking you based on your knowledge you already have so like that uh, you have to tell wheel is one important one so again bullock carts donkeys all these things were there in the starting roadways we don't need to learn these kind of basic things but you should know the uh, new missions of the government of india the golden quadrilateral connecting the four cities and there are multiple things now the bharat mala is there sagar mala is there uh, then a lot of budget has been allocated money has been allocated for uh, the national highway projects now when greenery across green highways green corridors are new projects in uh, government of india so such related current affairs you should know rest these kind of basic things you would already knowing we don't need to even read ncrts for that okay railway is also the railway missions the new new trains being introduced then uh, inter uh, country thing will be there where uh, trilateral highway between india myanmar thailand is there or uh, you can see the cpec is there between china and pakistan or uh, now india iran relations are there india iran afghanistan trilateral relations is there so that and all current affairs is more important when it comes to this transport communication all this trans siberian railway and all is like very old thing very old current affairs if you see across russia this much huge uh, long railway system is there okay from st petersburg to Vlad- vladivostok okay so this is all old thing but now we have the even bigger one the one belt one road thing of china or the maritime silk route of china or uh, the north uh, international which india russia iran is collaborating to form uh, to connect india with the central asia and then till north uh, such things are there which are all in current affairs and upsc can ask questions in prelims as well as mains okay so try to be updated with all the current affairs waterways again the new thing after the modi government has come at least i think 106 water waves have been approved and totally initially there were 5 then 106 and totally now you have 111 water waves approved approved in sense it's in planning and 5 uh, 6 water waves are already in progress and it's being uh, linked whether it be near uh, haldia in west bengal or it be uh, kottayam in kerala across india water waves have been promoted uh, and uh, because it's more cleaner okay cleaner form of uh, uh, transport india is moving towards a clean system clean energy in everywhere okay whether it be the political system environment geography physically economically everywhere india is trying to be more cleaner and greener in the coming years okay so waterways main question has also come regarding the importance of waterways and the ongoing projects so you should focus on the current affairs you don't need to bother about what is written here in this ncrt uh, airways you know udan scheme is there for making a regional connectivity of ports so i'm just telling you the current affairs related to each of these things okay because there is nothing much to read here helicopter planes and all you don't need to read these basic things which is told to seven standard students okay communication again 
current affairs you should know the uh, internet is like now uh, having new new forms okay wifi is over now the lifi is coming the light uh, light as a medium led bulbs are used okay what is the difference between lifi and wifi that kind of communication things you should know satellite related thing communication satellite uh, the gsat uh, then uh, worldwide missions okay not only india uh, isro nasa china whoever is doing something related to communication uh, then there is south asian satellite is there then there is a sark satellite now project mossam is there these kind of things in communication you should know okay i am not reading these ncert things again again i am repeatedly telling because there is nothing which you don't know okay there is nothing to read here that is why this chapter i am just calling out the whole uh, whole uh, what to say transport link or communication link air route and sea route they have shown okay not required for us so this chapter basically has nothing so don't think i simply called it down and did not explain anything here uh, wherever it is needed i'll tell you otherwise it's very silly even if you see this answer question answer in this chapter which is not a meaning which is not a means of communication this is a very idiotic question and this chapter itself is very silly okay that is why i'm telling we are we have nothing to do here okay not a means of communication table constructed under the ground subway which mode of transport is uh, most suitable to reach an island so, so there is nothing to take away from this chapter okay there is nothing at all which vehicle does not pollute the environment cycle so here again current affair i'll tell you cycle uh, solar highway is in news countries are generating solar highways where uh, uh, tell me the country now which is in news because they have created a solar highway where the uh, vehicles when it goes electric cars it will be charged wireless charging happens while we travel through that road okay uh, netherland was the first one i just remember when i saw the cycle netherland did it in uh, did it for a cycle path okay for cyclist that is why i remembered this so netherland is the first country then there was france and now there is a new country in news it was there in news yesterday only so please tell me that in comment section which is that country where solar highway i think about 2 kilometers it has been developed okay so like this try to relate it with current affairs so we are done with chapter 5 sorry 6 and 7 so there are three more chapters maybe i'll do it together in one video so at class 7 also will be complete so wait for that video till then enjoy your learning thank you and have a nice day